Stephanie, help. Uh, no. Fuck. I don't know what to do. Um... <laughs> well... I think the last thing he said is that... Uh, there might be something important in, in the police in the, records. Oh, yeah, 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 we gotta... Yeah. Yes, yes. Gotta go check the police DL6 records. case file. Present. This incident took place 15 years ago tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the completion of not one, but two trials. All thanks to the statute of limitations. However, I'm afraid the damage the DL6 incident has done will never be eased. I think we're gonna go to the police station yeah, and like, look, go in that little cool back room. to go there. It's weird how limiting these options are sometimes. Ooh, that's, that's a good scene. That's always good. Because that means something's gonna happen. Yeah, it always means a scene is starting. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for that old guy, Yogi. Boo boo. <laughs> ah, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, now I can't just have anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Why? You guys trust him more than you trust us? Yeah, what the fuck? Von Karma? Yes, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry! To what? To go, like, confront it's him? Just, or is he destroying evidence in there? It's just so bullshit that... Why are they like, letting him in there without any... It's uh, Yeah, we can't just let anyone in there, but, you know, Von Karma's in there. We trust him in there. He's well, special. Yeah, I know, but... He... <laughs> The prosecutor can go in there as much as they want, but not the defendant. We're both on the same case! It's not fair at all. Also, I find it hard to believe that they let someone in here without, uh, like, police supervision. You think that, like, you could be destroying evidence. Yeah, I, I think that uh, Gumshoe did, though. I think they let us in here. Well, I, I, I know he did. I'm saying like, even, even then, I'm surprised they let us. I'm just saying. Yeah, this also shows the police's clear bias in favor of the prosecutor over the defendant. Well, because that's justice, and arresting people is more fun than not arresting people. <laughs> it makes you feel like something it's got done. It's more fun to arrest people than not arrest people. No, it's true. We America loves a guilty verdict. Wee! Because it feels like you're you're making progress. Yeah. A non-guilty verdict. Even if it's a foundation of lies. Yes. Dusty as always. That is that is a provable thing, there's that whole aspect of like if someone's accused of something, there's they're inherently biased in, in favor of convicting them because like, well they must have done something. Otherwise, why would, <laughs> otherwise, why are they here? Well, why they, why they get? Why are they here in this trial room if they didn't do anything? Why are they consistently in police lineups if they didn't do anything wrong? It's yeah. not because maybe there's like a bias happening, or because the police pick up the same people over and over again. Yeah. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just ha haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. He's gonna pop out. Von Karma. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, like a vampire? Yeah. Blah. Blah. A one, <laughs> a two, of bats comes three. In and morphs into a person. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> if Von Karma's in a fighting game, I bet like he'd just start pulling some Castlevania Symphony of the Night shit. <laughs> I feel like there are fighting game characters like that that like maybe Absolutely. show up in like in like a swarm of something. Yeah. Die, monster! You don't belong in this world. I'm not very good at fighting games, but I always thought about what my like how my intro would be and how my like I I've seen a lot of Street Fighter. Just imagine your favorite JoJo character you've exactly. had so far, and that's basically a fighting game character. I, they have a JoJo's fighting game, by yeah. the way, but. I would. I, I was like, what would my pose be? Jojo what would I say at the end when I won? What would I say adventure. when I when I lost? Like, what, what would I say? I was like, poison because she would <laughs> kick people with her high heels and she'd step on their face and stuff. I'm mixing all the things you've said so far together. I, I'm sorry, very, <laughs> I talked too fast. And I'm I, excited. And I basically just landed on Morgan. Uh, so I have a bias against Morgan. The bat lady. Because I hate. <laughs> 
I hate Chris G, and that was the guy that was playing her for a long time when I went to Evo that one year. Oh. And he's like this, this guy. Really with this, specific. I know this is very specific. <laughs> so I can't I can't like Morgan because I have a bias against Morgan, but I love Poison, which is who I cosplayed to Evo, and she's the one that wears the high heels and steps on people's faces, and she has the big grunt guy come and like. Because hmm. Hugo's like her lackey. Huh, one of the drawers here is open. Was it open last time? I don't know. This is a distinctly unmemorable location. <laughs> I noticed it when we first got here, but I don't know if I just didn't notice it last yeah, time. Yeah, I don't remember. Someone must have just been looking in recently. The label says unsolved cases. Evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases. Nick! File for DL6, it's completely empty! What? What are you doing in here? Oh, he's scary head on. <laughs> <I don't> like <laughs> he's getting even. He, he, feel, he seems less bulky and more frail now, doesn't he? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, you know. I'm a little bit sad. Nick! It's just an angry old man. Yeah, I don't like him like this. I'm not like. He's not my daddy anymore. <laughs> He's not my daddy anymore. <laughs> Von Karma. G -g 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 -ghost. Ghost. You. How did you know my name? What? Wait. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> she maybe, maybe forgot about her. Huh? Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? <laughs> I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me. <laughs> <laughs> Needless things to be crushed. Wow. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. Look at that face! Now, now uh, Von Karma, please turn back to a three-fourths or three-quarter angle. Yeah. I think he looked much better that way. He looked like he looked like a larger person in every way. He looked like a boss fight. He's now like, he just looks like a nerd. I think his name should be Ichabod. Ichabod? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he went from an Alucard to an Ichabod. Oh, no! <laughs> the worst. Uh. That's the worst. What is it? The opposite of a glow of? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a step down. Uh, um, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed that veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Gosh, why does he look up to you? Mr. Von Karma. You had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. Hmm. So you did. But what I don't get is... Why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? Just out of pure spite towards his dad, apparently? The son of your most bitter rival? That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of the trial. Been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. We were right. Mmm. So Von Karma is going to bring up the DL6 incident in court. <clears> hmm. <throat> trying to think what we can gain from this interaction, because yeah. basically he just is proving that what we Aha, thought was true. Aha, your arch nemesis. <laughs> oh no! You think I, a prosecutor, would give you, a defense attorney, information? <laughs> uh, that should, I thought he was calling Mai's mom a fool. I was going to be like, that's rude. <laughs> Creep! Weird. You're here for some reason. Oops. Boop, boop. Mr. Gavon Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? 
You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. Mm. So you admit it. You you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You saved me from a lot of needless hassle. Is he gonna try to steal it from us? What? Oh yeah, yeah, I was gonna say we should have shown him this. Yeah, don't don't be a fool. N Nick, what is that thing? Make copies of everything. Oh no! Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> okay, he can be my dad again. <laughs> <laughs> face he's making. Wouldn't the cops hear that? Those things are really loud. Yeah. Yeah. No, stun guns are incredibly fucking loud. Tell everyone about how that time you got stun gun, Keith. <laughs> I know, I, the, the time you got tased, bro. I have not been tased, and I did not want to try it. I'm not. Have you been tased? No. It seems like a bad idea. Uh, I know someone in police training, and I guess they make you do it as a part yeah. of training. On some level, I feel like there's like a... There's like a thing where like, you have the idea in your head, like, ha, it'd be funny to get tasered. Like, ha, like, it just seems like a funny, like, stupid, like, hurt yourself a little bit, like, dare kind of thing to do. Then you're in a room with one, and you hear how fucking loud it is, and it's incredibly off-putting. You're like, oh. This feels incredibly dangerous instantly. The moment you hear how loud it is, you're like, this is way more threatening of a presence than I thought this thing was going to have. Ugh. I would definitely try it, but not out of the, like, jackass kind of, like, I just want to show off. I just yeah. want to be able to understand what it's like Yeah. for, like, all my future, my the rest of my life, I'll just have, like, this other added perspective on everything that involves this. I feel that way about a lot of experiences. Then there's the ones that, stunt, that uh, stab you. Yeah, they have little prongs that shoot out at you. Yeah. Apparently, I guess those, I don't think those uh, produce as much electricity as these ones do. Maybe. But I could be talking out of my ass, I don't know. But that's, that's what no I've heard. Idea. That's what I've heard. A stun gun. For self-defense. Usually. Usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. Kikido! 600,000... Maya, this is your chance to be useful. Take the hit. I need to run. <laughs> <laughs> She's, maybe it'll wake up Mia. <laughs> maybe. Maybe that, that's your waterfall training yeah. right there. Uh, this is, this is, I mean, if she's not going to be my bodyguard, why is she here? <laughs> she, she has nowhere else to she go. She does nothing so often. She's there for banter. This is her chance to be useful. She can take the hit and I can escape with the evidence because this guy's about to assault us, which should be a thing we can charge him for. And it sh the evidence, you'd think it'd be relatively easy to get because we're in a police station. Maya, just Did scream they... really loud. Yeah. Because what the fuck is he going to... How's he going to explain all the cops that come this in? This guy's going to assault us in the fucking police station. In the police station. Is yeah. there not a camera Yeah, here? I was going to say... There's... Shouldn't there be a camera in the evidence for, uh -huh. for when fucking serial killer fucking Dracula boss guys try to assault people for evidence? Dude, I don't... Mm, I don't know how any of this works. <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. Now give me the letter. Run, Phoenix, you idiot. No. No! Whoa, what are you... Nick, run! Oh my god, ah! I called it. It actually happened. Wow, Maya's a hero. <laughs> it actually happened. I was like, why do we... I mean, it'd be so fucking frustrating for us to like helplessly surrender the evidence when he has a non-lethal weapon and we have a second person. <laughs> but you're still standing here, Nick. You didn't run like you were supposed to. Yeah, no, he's an idiot. He's such an idiot. You're in the same position you were Maya. before. Out of my way. Wait, Phoenix. You're supposed to run. Idiot. Maya jumped at him for you. Uh, she's too good for him. He's too much of an idiot for his own good. He's so fucking useless. Also, we just got assaulted and screamed and stuff, and all these police officers are just like, eh, it's Tuesday. Just two people <laughs> taking a nap in our records room. Yeah. You know, whatever, they're just taking a nap, that's <sighs> fine. He got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. Oh my gosh. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya, 
Is she okay? Yeah, she'd be better if you fucking did your job. Man, if I was Maya and I woke up, I'd be pissed you didn't run away. I'd be like, what did I even sacrifice myself for? How do people deal with Phoenix as a protagonist for a whole franchise? <laughs> like, this is kind of... Some of these moments are kind of deal breakers where you're like, motherfucker, we're just stuck with this guy, huh? <laughs> well, since you're reading him out, God I keep picturing damn. him as you, so I can't... No. <laughs> I can't like. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> I can't I'm throw him out. I'm subliminally getting dumber in your brain. The longer we play this game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Maya's, you know, she's not the she's adorable. She's not the sharpest tool in the shed, though. But <laughs> well, don't worry, Stephanie. If you took a, ra a taser for me, I would totally run. I was away. gonna say you actually better. Like I'd be really mad at any of any of you guys living here if this happened. We got burglarized, and I did this for you. <laughs> And I just nullify your sacrifice. I'd be so mad at you. <laughs> Maya. And that's how she died. She's out of the franchise. She actually had a, um, what's it called? A, one of those heart... Uh, heart palpitations? No, those little pacemaker. those, uh, pacemakers. <laughs> she kills her she didn't tell us, but she had a pacemaker this whole time. And then the next, the, the, the fifth case is us charging one karma for murdering Maya. Oh no! <laughs> and we can't get enough evidence, even though it happened in a police station surrounded by police officers, because everyone in this universe is awful and stupid. Yeah, because the camera only takes, uh, takes pictures of people going in the, yeah, in the like records some, room, but not out. Some stupid rule set that makes it easy to get away with it. And also, he's got the keys to the security, and he just deleted it, because fuck everything. <laughs> <laughs> Maya, open your eyes. Look at the tears. You can't be dead. Oh, you weren't hit by tears. a statue that tells the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's how people die in this world. Yeah. <laughs> Maya. Why didn't you run away? The letter, did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, are you okay? No! I hurt. I, I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Oh no! Maya. Grrr, there has to be some way to help her. <laughs> Are you a bear now? Rawr. <laughs> I'd better do something about her self-confidence first. Yeah, like taking the blame because you fucked up. Say, you're a you minor. Idiot. I put you in the situation. Yeah. Maya, she's holding something. Oh, she what is that, a bullet? Wait, did he... Did, did no, she it's, just, it's, like, it's evidence bullet. Did she just pickpocket the evidence bullet from him? I guess so. DL6 evidence, uh, incident. Evidence number seven, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. Not really. Another bullet that is, like, un for, un like completely fully formed and fine. That somehow stopped in, like, soft tissue. Does Japan have shitty guns? Is that the plot twist here? Does Japan just have shittier guns? Well, first of all, this is L.A. No. They have powerful, they have powerful guns in L.A. In L.A. there are powerful guns. Yes. All these all these guns, we, we keep getting pistol shots, these bullets for evidence, and they, they're they all, like, uncrumpled, but they also didn't go through the body. They all are stopped, like, in soft well, tissue. They were in an elevator, so there's no way that bullet shouldn't have gone through them. Because <laughs> they're in close range. Like, yeah, that's they're, not they're far close away. range, but also why, the, the bullet's, like, unscathed, but I'm like... The heart isn't easily accessed through the body without hitting bones and things. I mean, there's a there are possibilities of that. It could clip the heart like on the side. I think there's like a you can you can you can get it clean in there. I I'm feel like you sure. got I feel like you got to go through a rib cage to get to the heart. And if you're going through a rib cage, I feel like it probably like I feel like you're gonna do that. I don't know. I'm like rib I'm like cage palpitating my sternum right now. Does that make the bullet go crumple at all? I feel like it should be crumpled, kind of, at close range. It's just like an unscathed, pristine, like, unfired-looking bullet. Maybe they just didn't draw it correctly, because uh, Japan doesn't have a lot of guns, and they don't have reference yeah. photos. So that's, what that's what a bullet looks like, like a fingernail. Yeah, It does look like a fingernail. It's a fingernail that yeah. kills. <laughs> 
I never thought I'd hear that sentence. Taken directly from the heart. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. DL6 bullet stash in pocket. That's where I keep all my evidence, this one pocket. Except for that one time I whipped it out in front of the person who'd most want to take it. I'm yeah, the... not expecting anything to go wrong. Bad idea. I'll prove it to you, Ma Maya. You're the most... You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. Tell her now. You're like, whoa, a bullet. Oh, that was all we had left to do. Neat. Or just say you're not useless in general. Like, yeah. I'm the one who... Like, I fucked up too. Phoenix Wright, come on now. Be a good a mentor. Oh, I stayed in the wrong slot again. Thought I was in slot one. Damn it! Whatever. Ooh. It's just my headache for the future. <laughs> Don't delete everything. Yep. December 28th, 9.51 a.m. Other shit. This is it. Judgment Day. Whoa. Today, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Oh, ah, what's the big idea? S -s Sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run-in with the sun gun yesterday. That's not how things work. No. <laughs> That's not how things work at all. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. I hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. <laughs> really? We're gonna. We're, this is just a gag we're sticking with. All right. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. <laughs> Alright. I discharge every day. Just wear a bunch of rubber. <laughs> Trying to electrocute anyone on your way out. Is it, I think it's gumshoe. Oh uh, yeah, it is. It's pal, so. Oh yeah, pal. Did you like knock him out? Oh. What's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, good morning. How did it go, uh, how did it go, detective? Have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. <laughs> Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. That has to be a lie. If not, maybe we can reveal it with electroshock. <laughs> or with a parrot. Like jolts his brain. <laughs> Electrocute the parrot. Oh no. Electrocute the parrot. <laughs> Why would he want a revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember. And I'm going to prove it. It would have been easier with that evidence I got lost, though. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, uh, Phoenix. You really fucked us, Phoenix. That was a bad idea. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. Ah, uh, right, very well. We have reached the final days of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. The uh, the coverage I've got here is really highlighting the uh, lack of gender split in the cast. <laughs> 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 when every single character is a dude. Come well, on. sorry. And the only the only female character is there in like a mascot sense <laughs> to just cheer us on as all the important characters do everything. I was gonna say like uh, like the the lessening Maya. the emotional burden is like a constant role that female characters play. I can th yeah. think of, like a million anime where it's like a very serious important problem, but there's like lighthearted female cheer from the sidelines yeah. to make everybody in the audience happy. They establish a female character that's the most uh, that's the most competent character in the entire narrative seemingly and then immediately kill her 
It's like, well, that's enough of her. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have her be the protagonist or anything. We need an underdog idiot man. We, we need the, the we need a fun female character that just is there and is happy and makes yeah. everyone happy. Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Uh, is, that, uh, that, that, is that, wait, that's my role. Am I yeah. that? Am I that person? <laughs> oh no. Very well, Mr. Mon Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. That'd be a weird thing for the caretaker to do. <laughs> yes. It is I, the murderer! <laughs> <laughs> I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Oh, that's not bubble. Yeah. Missed it. I missed it so much. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake, from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. We don't have any, like, public records. Yeah. Fingerprints yeah. from the police. Anything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> is that what he emptied out? Was that evidence? <laughs> witness? Why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, he, as he will now testify. Well, let him say it himself, Carmen. He literally ran away. We all saw. Remember that time you shocked us? Yeah, remember when you assaulted us and we didn't yeah. call you out on it? I, I see. Very well. Please begin your testimony. Huh? Why I left court. <laughs> Just have a whack you about you're wondering how I got here. <laughs> how I left court is the name of my Please frame. my first studio album. <laughs> um, I'm really sorry about leaving yesterday like I did, but I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly. See, I figured I got nothing to do with the incident anyhow. Uh, I mean I. I'd need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. <laughs> the animation of him falling asleep. It'd be endearing if he wasn't a murderer. Or gross with his snot. Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi and I'm going to prove it. Hmm. Uh, I'm really sorry about leaving yesterday like I did. Oops. Hold it. I'd call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. Okay. Uh, leaving to get bird food is not acceptable in the middle of a court trial, yeah. sir. He was supposed to be in custody. So it's good. fucked up they just vanished in the first place. Yeah, what the fuck's the bailiff? What was the bailiff doing? But he also definitely... <sighs> he definitely ran away. <laughs> he didn't just, like, take a quick pit stop. He wasn't like that guy that works in the, uh... Was the NBA? There's somebody that fucked up where, like, some sports league is currently trying to start get back into having bubble games, I guess it's called, is when you have, uh, you do the games, but, like, everybody in the entire match all has to be quarantined continuously surrounding the game so that they can't affect each other, and they're not allowed to see their family and their friends and so on, but also there's no audience at the stadium, because it's entirely, like, a quarantined game so that the industry can restart and all that, which... Already, I'm like, mm. that seems like shitty treatment, but I guess they get paid like a mountain, so I guess they can deal with like being weird, like sports prisoners for a while. <laughs> <laughs> if, they're getting, if they're getting paid for it adequately, I guess. I don't know. But uh, one of their coaches went out to buy toothpaste, and so now he can't rejoin his team and he can't be a coach, so he's gonna miss the first two weeks of the 
of the league because he went out to buy toothpaste and broke quarantine, and now they won't let him back in. <laughs> oh no! So, yeah, so he fucked himself so hard. I said he's he's rich enough. Have someone buy that for for you. Yeah, what a what a mistake. Maybe it was a sabotage. Like a rival coach is like, <laughs> I am NBA von Karma. <laughs> I'm gonna squeeze out all scheme. of your toothpaste, and I'm gonna like make yeah, all your toothpaste disappear. I'm gonna trick disappear. this guy into going out for toothpaste, like and knowing that he'll get quarantined. <laughs> <laughs> it's my evil plan. Because you know, not brushing your teeth feels really gross after a while. So I think you know, maybe if you, that but other. The steak, but the stakes are low. <laughs> like yeah, it's not worth that. No, not at all. But. He seems relaxed. Yes. In fact, they both do, Von Karma and Yaniyogi. Almost like they coached this whole situation. But I wasn't running away or nothing. Oops. Then why did you leave? He's just about to say why. Is it so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone is talking? This is- Bitch, this is my job. <laughs> <laughs> If I say if I sat quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. Three, two. <laughs> I uh, went to buy some food for Polly. See. Objection! Doesn't Polly eat spaghetti at your spaghetti restaurant? The wet food? noodle. I've never heard of that. <laughs> well, Polly is a bit of a gourmand, you see. She only eats these high-quality bird pellets from France. How do you afford these? <laughs> it's like parasite. <laughs> When you recognize that the the dog food in Parasite was like imported from the United States, yeah, no, I did. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, "That's like, yeah. I know that brand. I know this brand. These rich motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they only have them in the pet, the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker's shack? Uh, well." I kind of got lost, you see. <laughs> Are you me? <laughs> Are you me? Yeah, were you walking a dog? Yeah, I, I get lost walking my dog around the neighborhood. <laughs> we were like, do we have to rescue her? Is she okay? <laughs> you left us the most fucking worrying message. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Story time. You left us a text message that's like... I, just just you. Yeah. Because I, I you, was too embarrassed to tell anyone else. You texted me and you were like... Hi, uh, I might need you to pick me up. Oh, I just said, if, if, if I needed to, would you be able to pick me up? I, I got lost, haha. Yeah. -ha. And then I tried text. and then I, I didn't see that message for half an hour. And then when I did see it, I tried texting and calling you, and there was no feedback, and we, and we were like... Yeah, I didn't well, realize my phone was on silent. Yeah, so we were like, this is... foreboding. <laughs> so we just started to be like, do we need to rescue... Do we need to, like, mount a rescue operation? And, like, we t I talked to John, and, like, he's able to... He was like... We were like doing forensics on you, and we were we were able to, we were able to successfully figure out which park you probably were at. I went to a large was, park, and I think that park was correct. Yes, it and we was, were able to do but... a Phoenix Wright thing where we were like able to trace back where you likely went, and we were like gathering evidence. Okay. And we, were, we were gonna track you down. <laughs> it's during quarantine times. I couldn't get an Uber. Okay, yeah. I traveled down a a, a a very large public park here. I went down a path. I Objection! Thought, I, I thought I, it. <laughs> this is all your testimony. I need to press each line. <laughs> I thought it looped around. I thought it looped around, but it didn't. And eventually, I was like, I don't know where I am. I look up on my phone. And it says it's gonna take me like a freaking two hours to walk back to my car, where I parked in front of this. You're carrying Kiki around because her paws hurt, so you're well, doing I double was, duty I, I now. I was worried that she would get tired, so I carried her <laughs> yeah. most of the way back to my car. So you're carrying your dumb dog along the side of the road. What a visual. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I kept thinking to myself, I think I'm almost there. And then I kept getting e each street confused. So I was like, I think I'm almost there. But it was it was like further yeah. than I thought each time. But eventually I got back. I was I was too embarrassed to, to like, <laughs> I didn't want to make a big deal about it because I was embarrassed. So like. <laughs> Ugh. That was terrible. <laughs> I got sunburned. So as you can all tell. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I get lost a lot. <laughs> when the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma Stephanie. No <laughs> one's going to believe that. I get lost in the neighborhood. See. I get lost when I, like, I've had to look up my way home just in our neighborhood. 
it's risky. It's, it's little houses on the hillside. Little houses made of ticky tacky, and they all look the same. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 you don't know that song? What's with this jibber jab over here? <laughs> I'll have to show that to you. It's the, um, it's a song you can get very familiar with if you ever watch the show Weeds, which is from the, the creator of Orange is the New Black before she made that show. I actually didn't know that those were related. Yeah, she made Weeds. She was the showrunner of Weeds before that. And that's the theme that so there's, there's a song that's the theme song for every single season of the entire show is little houses on the hillside, little houses made of ticky tack. Like it's a it's a song about suburbia basically. Ticky tack. Because it because because Weeds was Breaking Bad before Breaking Bad, where it's like some yeah. nice white suburban like white collar worker that has an easy life breaks bad was like the premise. Yeah, she's a, she's and a they, pot they, dealer. And, they, and it was like Back it's actually pot was legal. Yeah. Like, when I went back and watched it, having already watched Breaking Bad, it was kind of eerie how similar a lot of the beats were, except she's not as overtly evil by the end as Walter White is. <laughs> but she does, does she does plenty of shitty things throughout. Uh, but we'll get to that later. But that was a fun, that was a fun watch. I see. So he was lost. Please, your honor, come to your senses. No one could possibly be so easily lost yeah. as an adult human. Yeah. Never. I, I have trouble believing this story. <laughs> unless Where you, were you, Stephanie? Say, unless you know me. <laughs> Y'all know I got problems. <laughs> one, of, one of the funniest things you do is when you, you forget something and then you find it and then you're like, how do I do that? I, oh my god. <laughs> You're mad at you're I'm frustrated amazed with at yourself. myself. Like I don't know. Because like we were in the we were in the kitchen doing dinner stuff, and then we looked over and we opened up the toaster oven, and it was full of cooked Brussels sprouts. <laughs> and we were just like, "How do I do that?" <laughs> like I ate this, a whole dinner, you and I forgot that I had made those as a part of my dinner. Yeah. It's like, it's like you. <laughs> at least you. At least it didn't just keep cooking. I guess. <laughs> No, I mean, they, they were good. Yeah. <laughs> I just had, had for breakfast just, the next yeah, morning. Yeah, they just weren't warm anymore. But they're good. Oh my <laughs> gosh, guys. It's terrible. I left stuff in the fridge. Like, oh my goodness. I don't know how I do it. I'm, I'm lucky you guys are so yeah. patient with me. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad it was until that one time... I think we told this, this story before. <laughs> the paper towel story. Yeah, the paper towel story where you were telling me a story uh, about how you forgot the paper towels, and then after you told me the story, I walked into the bathroom that you were, <laughs> you were that you're saying you forgot the paper towels in, oh my and they were still there. Oh my it's gosh! Like, it became this 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 past thing about you forgetting them in the bathroom became like a fun story you were telling people, and you still hadn't remembered. I still hadn't to remembered to take them out. Of the bathroom. <laughs> It was already something that was complete in my brain. <laughs> it became a past memory and not a current thing. <laughs> so like, you, you hit a stage where you're now remembering it instead of forgetting it, but you, but you miscategorized it out of being a current thing. <laughs> so you still weren't dealing with it. No, my workplace. It's the funniest detail. My workplace knows that I like I work my ass off, but they all yeah. know that I forget things everywhere, and so it's at the point now where it's like. Did you pull a Stephanie today? Yeah. And I'm like, hee hee, I did. Oops, <laughs> I left that over there. Do you want? Do you want to tell that story? Which? One? Oh my <laughs> gosh. I got a. Okay, so I was I was at home on a day off, and I got a text message about um, a very expensive piece of handheld work equipment for inventory management. And I was like, they're like, they're asking me where it was, and I was like thinking to myself, and I was like, okay, and I thought really hard. And I realized that I think I sealed it and taped it in a cardboard box that I put up on a shelf <laughs> in my warehouse. I think I, I, I taped it up and put it away without realizing it. But I thought to myself, I can't tell this person that. Because then they'll know. Because they'll A, they'll know. And B, if I'm wrong, they'll still know that that's a possibility from me. That you thought it was true. So I decided to just ignore the text and pretend like I was sleeping or whatever. Yeah. The next day I get to work, I storm, I was, I was there by myself, I like storm into the back, I unwrap the exact box I was thinking of, I open it, and there it is. <laughs> like you took your tools and packed it up like it was something you're supposed to pack away in like a tape box. Like I put it in with like completely <laughs> different supplies that were never gonna be accessed yeah. anytime soon. I put Danger. a very 
common piece of equipment that we use on a daily basis without realizing. <laughs> it's basically like taping a phone in a box. It's, like it's, it's, it's just as bad. Then you knew, so it's like, huh? Well, and, yeah, I thought really at hard. At least you knew exactly where it was. I was like, I like, there's no, I, that's definitely yeah. something I would do. I couldn't, I couldn't like cross it off the list as being a possibility, yeah. and I was correct. It was back there. No one knows that to you, this you day. Know, you know yourself, but now you all know. I told my, my boss the next day, was like, oh, so where was it? And I was like, <laughs> you lied. I was like, oh, it, you know, it was in the back room. I was There's being vague. this other place. I was being vague. I was like, yeah, oh, it's just in the warehouse. Because you, like, you made up a thing where it was like, it was in the it was in a, a wrong place, but not a crazy wrong place. I, I, did, I just so said like, I just said like, it was in the warehouse. I didn't I didn't tell them why it was in a box. I said oh, it was in the it was in the warehouse, you know. And she's like, oh, of course it is. Why did they check there? They should know if they're working with <laughs> Stephanie. That they should that they should check back there. And I was actually kind of touched because she was being so genuinely mad yeah. at them about it. And I'm like, they're, they're mad, mad at them for your mistake. And I was like, well, it's my fault because you know I always do that. And she's like, yeah, but they know that you always do that, <laughs> so it's not your fault. They should know to check back there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thanks, <laughs> but sorry. Oh, you know what the the movie pulled? It's the grandma from a Chris. Uh, from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. The one sitting in the car? The one that like packs their cat and stuff. <laughs> like they bring the Christmas presents in and it's just like random things from around the house including their pet. Yeah. <laughs> like they just pack things as Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> well I guess what you're getting for Christmas is your Keith. So whatever I lost three months ago. <laughs> you're getting That's where it is. Kiki for Christmas. Oh no. <laughs> what a curse. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. <laughs> uh, I mean, I need one of those. Oh. Hold, Hold it. Hold it. That's not correct. Viper. Oh no. You've lost much of your memory. Is that correct? Uh, yep. Seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh. Or. Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory. <laughs> you know exactly who you are. Oh, Josh. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Grr. <laughs> <laughs> he's been gurring a lot lately. Yeah. This is with the kick the scriptwriter was on that day. How am I supposed to prove that uh, what's going on in that old codger's head? That's impossible. If only we had, like, fucking copies of our evidence around so that you can't steal the one copy. Yeah, you think you'd make copies, and then also you're not supposed to show your hand, Phoenix. Yeah. You don't show the opposing team what you've got. It's you. Duh. It's you, the perpetrator. I've met you in the spooky abandoned mansion with no witnesses and told no one where I was going. And here's all the evidence on this one flash drive that I've made no copies of. I've got you right where I want you. <laughs> it's like, you idiot. God damn it. <laughs> I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. Uh, I mean, I need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do! That's not how anything works, Phoenix. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> you had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness had no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might, might I say something, Mr. Wright? Objection! <laughs> Shut up, Judge. Oh, oh okay. No, oh, oh, well, okay. <laughs> I just accept whatever people shout at me. If they're authoritative enough, you, you, I just believe them. You sound like my wife. Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past, or lack thereof, into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Yeah. Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. 
How do you prove this? Order, order. Mr. Wright, that, that, there is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Oh ho! Now this is interesting. I would like to know myself, so who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. <laughs> Mr. Wright, please tell us the witness's name. <laughs> Why is this a choice? <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> say, I really hope that the, I, it's just making sure you're paying attention. It's Gregory Edgeworth. That would be confusing. Well, he like doesn't. He like didn't want to be Edgeworth's dad, so he like went into hiding. So oh my god! Raise Miles oh my god! What if that's the answer? <laughs> That'd be but really the, sad. But then why? Then why did his fucking senile brain invent a new family? Uh, nah. to, to, with someone named Keith in it. Okay. <laughs> I keep encountering Keiths in media, and it's freaking me out. Like when you let me black hole, and I read through that, the entire story is protagonist. Yeah, I totally was forgot Keith. that 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 had a Keith in it. Yeah. It's like I've been watching, and I've been watching Walking Dead that's introducing a Stephanie. I'm like, all right, it's getting weird. <laughs> oh, his name's showing up so much now. I always tell people, my name is just really common, but I always think Stephanie is like a waitress at Applebee's. <laughs> that's like what I picture in my brain. Is that is that your purgatory? Is that like the nightmare other reality you witness whenever you go to sleep? As you wake up as Stephanie in the Applebee's? <laughs> Man, <laughs> yeah, I can't think of a Not more. just Applebee's, the Applebee's. It's the, always the, the Applebee's, Applebee's. In an infinite white void. <laughs> oh no. It's just an Applebee's in the hyperbolic time chamber. <laughs> I can't imagine a more mediocre restaurant to it's work just, in for all of Purgatory. It's your forever place, like your Clara. <laughs> We're having Margarita Tuesdays. <laughs> and I get the same people every like every Tuesday for for a happy hour drinks. And they're always like the same like older white men who like make the same jokes every every Tuesday. Oh my, oh my gosh, I could picture this too well. Oh my god, your dream, your nightmare is being Clara at the diner. Uh, some so of you, know, some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't know who, who's Clara. Uh, we'll get to that <laughs> at some point. Exciting. Uh, I need enough time to pass so that you can't draw any information from that spoiler. <laughs> All right. Yay. I'll forget it. I'll, yeah. In two seconds. No context. Uh, do you ever, do you, do, do, I don't know, do you ever have like a defense mechanism against spoilers? Cause I do. Where like sometimes when I, because I, so much of my stuff kind of sometimes depends on like avoiding spoilers. I sometimes like just hear someone kind of talking about something that sounds like it's about something I'm, I haven't watched yet. And I kind of just stop listening to them. <laughs> Like, I just kind of tune out and don't commit any of it to memory on purpose. And I just, like, wide out that entire conversation. I mean, I think I can, like, glaze over. Yeah. But if, if I caught any of it, I will think of it when it shows up. And I'll start, like, being like, is it? Is this going to be the part? Is, <laughs> is this that thing that I saw partially? Because my brain will start trying to put it together even if I don't want it to. Mm.